Yet another emotionally heartbreaking loss for the Toronto Blue Jays. This time 14-8 to the Tampa Bay Rays in 11 innings. And the Jays now drop to 23-23 and on the year. And I got one thing to say. Charlie, I can pitch, man. I may not have the crazy off speed. I may not throw 100, but I can throw uh, in and around the 80 mark. And I can throw strikes, damn it! Because that seems to be a giant problem for this Jays team. They lose 14-8. Trent Thorne gets the open, can't throw strikes. I don't care how close those two strikes were on G-Man Choi and, um, and Walls. But either way, they were not strikes, so they could have gone the other way. So it's your fault. And let, don't even get me started on the latter half of the innings with Castro, Piamps, and Mays. Yeah, those are your extra inning pitchers against the Tampa Bay Rays. Joel Piamps, Tim Mesa. Anthony Castro. Yeah, sure. Okay, great job, Charlie. I guess that has to do with in your bag of tricks or your book of tricks, I guess. Let's break this puppy down right from the beginning. First inning, all right? As I mentioned, the bases are now loaded for the Tampa Bay Rays. Okay, G-Man Choi walks to load the bases. Close pitch, called it a ball. Walls comes up. Full count pitch, close, calls it a ball. Walks in the first run of the ball game. Next up, Joey Wendell crushes a grand slam, and the Jays are down 5 nothing, just like that. And coming into the game, I was okay with Trent Thornton to start the ball game because I'm like, you know what, we've seen a lot of Ross Stripling. He hasn't been the greatest. Fine, I'm okay with giving, you know, Trent Thornton the start. Five runs in the first. Okay, well, so much for that idea. And in comes Ross Stripling. Well, at this point, you're down 5 nothing. Why not? Well, he was fantastic, and he allowed the Blue Jays' offense to get back into the game. Bottom of the second, Guriel solo shot. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Vladi hits a moonshot, hits a 461 feet, 117.4 miles an hour off the bat. Cooked. Next batter, Teoscar Hernandez crushes a solo shot. All right, we got a 5-3 ball game here. Three home runs. All right, let's get this thing going here. It's only the fourth inning. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning, and still 5-3 game. Ross Rippling dealing to this point. Vladi comes up with Rowdy Telez on base because he got a trip, a pinch hit triple. Yeah, Rowdy Telez got a pinch hit triple. It was off the wall and it kicked away, but it doesn't matter. Rowdy's on third, and Simeon and Bichette both strike out. That, was, that, that triple for Rowdy was to lead off the inning. Those two guys strike out, and I'm like, are you kidding me? And Vladi comes up, and they bring in Thompson to face him, with, who's got a funky, funky delivery. And he gets a slider over the middle of the plate and crushes it deep and gone. Two-run bomb for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And we're tied at five. Wow, what a ball game to this point. You know, Jordan Romano goes out there in the top of the ninth inning, does a job, bottom nine, can't do much with it. Top of the tenth inning, Anthony Castro comes out. A guy who just came off the IL, you know, has pitched one inning in his previous start or previous outings since coming off the IL and wasn't very good. You're putting him out there in extra innings? Are you nuts? He's got good stuff, but he literally just came off the IL. You see what happened to Dolis when you fresh off the IL? Here's a here's a high leverage situation. It doesn't go well. But the analytics suggest who flipping cares about the analytics, Charlie? Damn it, let your eyes do the talking. Or it, yeah, sure, let's let's do it that way. But in that top of the tenth inning, you know, you get some not so good things happen. Austin Meadows, it's an RBI double. Brad Phillips comes in to score, then Margot singles, and Rosarina comes in to score, and we're like, we're gonna lose another one like this, are we? Great. But Marcus Simeon has extra things to talk about. Bottom of the 10th inning, it's two-run shot. Jonathan Davis comes in to score, and we're tied at seven. All oh, the Jays are going quiet. But don't worry. <laughs> don't worry, top 11. We're not going to throw out Dolis. We didn't throw out Jordan Romano for a second inning because the numbers suggest. We didn't put A.J. Cole out there. He's pitching a lot of high-leverage situations for the Blue Jays. Yep, we're not going to do that. Joel Piamps. Yes, he pitched two innings on Friday and was good in those two innings and extra innings. But the guy literally has been DFA'd how many times by the Jays and Red Sox before staying with the Jays. He's a decent pitcher. Not in high leverage extra inning situations. But the stats suggest the books... Who cares about the damn book, Charlie? Who cares about the numbers and who hits where and what situation against which side reliever? Who gives a damn? 
You got to put your best relievers out there to give you the best possibility to win a damn ball game. And he's just not doing it. He throws Romano out there in the top of the ninth, and I'm like, that's what you want to see. What does he do? Three up, three down, strikes out the side. Well, no, no flipping away. I mean, he's a good reliever, so that's what happens. But then you throw in Castro, who hasn't thrown probably 25 games in the big leagues. Like I mentioned, Piamps, who's been DFA'd how many times in the offseason before staying with the Blue Jays, didn't start the year with the team. Oh, he's got good numbers. Yeah, well, how many of those are high leverage situations? Not many. It doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. And listen to this, because when Joel Piams comes out, and then Tim Mesa comes out, and oh, oh, it's batting practice for the Tampa Bay Rays. Top 11, he hits an RBI single, scoring two. Walls and Brasso come in to score. A Rosarena doubles, Wendell scores. Meadows RBI, ground out Mejia comes in to score. Margot then triples, a Rosarena and Brendan Lau score. Then Brasso hits an RBI single, Margot comes in to score. A seven-run inning, and you're down 14-7 just like that. Well, you know, Espinal gets an RBI ground out in the bottom half of the 11th scoring to Oscar Hernandez, who flipping cares. 14-8 ball game. The only positives you can take from a game like this, well, Vladdy went two for five, had two home runs, the three RBIs, has tied Acuna for the MLB lead in home runs, has the highest war in all of the big leagues. He has an OPS of over 1.1. I mean, it's, it's, his numbers are through the roof nuts. Teoscar Hernandez goes two for five, a couple runs scored, RBI obviously on the home run that he hit. And Lourdes Gurriel Jr., not getting talked about a whole lot because the other guys are hitting so well. He went three for five with a run scored and RBI. He is getting red hot, is Lourdes Gurriel, and that's great to see. Pitching staff, Trent Thornton, one inning, two hits, five runs, two strikeouts, and two walks. Two very meaningful walks. Uh, Ross Stripling, as I mentioned, was unbelievable. Seven, seven innings, two hits, seven strikeouts, and two walks. He was awesome. He was spectacular, was Ross Stripling. Jordan Romano, clean inning, no hits, no walks, three strikeouts, as I mentioned. And here come the fun stuff. Anthony Castro, one inning, two hits, two runs, two strikeouts, and a walk. Not very good. Uh, Joel Piamps didn't record an out. Went, uh, went zero innings because he didn't get anybody out. Two hits, four runs, and walked about. Tim Mesa goes one inning, allows three hits, three runs, two strikeouts, and a walk. He was not good either. And the Blue Jays drop at 14-8. They've lost six consecutive. They got swept in the four-gamer by the Rays. And now you got to go play the Yankees. Great. I don't know what else to say, guys. This is not a one-player fix. We'll call up Alec Manoa. Well, he might help you one day. What about the other ones? It's not a one-player fix. There's something going on, and I don't know what it is. Whether it's Charlie Montero not managing his team properly, or he's overmanaging his team. Luis said it on the Instagram Live today. They overmanage him. Like, it's a very good point. Um, but all I know, guys, is that this team is just not playing very well pitching-wise. Their bullpen has been... There's a difference between struggling and full-on imploding. And that is what's happening right now for the Toronto Blue Jays' bullpen. Uh, it, it's pretty crazy. Now, crazy stats uh, that I wanted to bring up today was that um, Ross Stripling came out of the pen today, technically. right? Obviously came out in the second inning to, you know, to relieve uh, Trent Thornton. And his numbers as a reliever and as a starter are vastly different. Now, obviously, the innings pitch are, you know, there's a giant difference between the two. Uh, I think, uh, where's his numbers here I got here? 4.26 ERA uh, in three, thir 323 innings pitched uh, in his career. Uh, uh, coming out of the bullpen, though, in only 138 innings coming into today's game, ERA of 3.26. Those are fantastic numbers. And he had seven shutout innings today. Have we found something with Ross Stripling? Maybe an opener and then he comes out of the pen? I don't know. It's something I think they definitely definitely should try in his next go-around because you got to try something. You know, whatever it was, it worked today with Ross Stripling, so you got to try it again next week and just see if something sticks. That's really about all you got. Now, speaking of the Yankees and playing tomorrow, you're at the Bronx, so we got to say goodbye to TD Ballpark, and I think we're all saying good riddance. We'll see you next spring. Because we don't want to see that again. TD Ballpark has been, it's probably a good facility. They probably treat everybody great. But when you go in there, it's 95% the opposing fans. Whether it's Boston, Yankees, Rays even. I mean, it's just sad. You're, it's a home game. And you have no fans there. Now they're going up to Buffalo and Salem Field, which I'm assuming there's going to be a lot more Jays fans there. there so that's great news in that sense. But now you got to go to the Bronx to take on the Yankees in game one of that series tomorrow night. It's a 7.05 first pitch. Corey Kluber. He's throwing a no-hitter this year. 
and uh, as pretty much everybody has, it seems. And Steven Matz gets the ball for the Blue Jays in game one of that set in New York. Matz was great in his last outing. Can he put it together and do, give us another good one? We'll have to wait and see, all right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and did not enjoy the ending to this game, it was a great game overall, but a horrible ending. Let's smack that like button. Do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you have not done so already. Comment down below your thoughts on the video, thoughts on the game. Would you like, would you not like from today's ball game for the Toronto Blue Jays? There's a lot to like. There's also a lot to dislike. Let me know what your thoughts in the comments below. Twitter's down below for myself, folks. I mean, I'm doing that great stuff. The Instagram link is down below, so follow up there. If you have not done so already, and I will talk to you guys, Leafs is in game three tonight between the Leafs and the Habs. Seven o'clock puck drop there as the Buds look for a 2-1 series lead over the Montreal Canadiens. As for the Blue Jays, they open up the set against the Yankees in the Bronx tomorrow night, 7.05 first pitch there. Corey Kluber, Steven Matz is the pitching matchup. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll talk to you guys then.